All right, here we are. Let's see our folder is number 14 and index.html. Here we go. Now, we have made our application a lot more readable with our gift box here. But I still see some code that is reused here. We have our grid of GIFs that is still reusing the same code. So we have columns, column, and columns, column. And if we wanted to change this to one third, I would have to copy this and paste that down there is one third. So now we have one third instead of one quarter. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually create a component out of this section that uses this other custom component and then reuse that code so we could have one line right here and one line right here. Well, we can do that. Let's, let's use views components to create a GIF grid component. So we have GIF box. Let's create a GIF grid, view.component, GIF grid, and we'll pass in our objects. Props, let's see, what's our props gonna be? Our inputs is gonna be GIFs. Now, earlier, right, we had trending GIFs and search GIFs. But down here, since this component doesn't really know about other components, we know that this is just going to say GIFs. We don't have to say trending GIFs. It doesn't really care, right? It's compartmentalized into itself. So it doesn't care if there's a GIF grid here, GIF grid, and then there's a GIF grid right next to it. It doesn't really care as long as it gets passed in a GIFs is equal to search GIFs. And this one down here is GIFs is equal to trending GIFs. Sorry, let's move that up there so it actually looks better. Let's go up here. Since they're side by side, this view component doesn't care about this view component. It's only worried about its own template and its own inner workings. That's what's really cool about components is their reusability and they don't flow out into each other and start manipulating each other's code. So this is search GIFs and this is trending GIFs. Now let's just cut that and put that here. And let's cut this one and put it up here. And then let's remove all of that code right there and all of this code right here. Well, let's cut that out. And now we have a trending section and a search section and we did that all in one, two, three, four, four lines of code. Well, five, you know, get it somewhere around there. But we have a GIF box here, and now we have our GIF grid. Props inputs is GIFs and template. And that's an ES6 backtick, just so we can do multiple lines. Our template is that right there. And GIF box is able to be used since we declared this globally. It's just a view component that is usable across our entire application. And we'll also talk about registering components globally versus registering it per view instance, which you probably don't want to register everything globally, right? We're trying to get away from polluting the global scope. So here we have our GIF grid. It has access to this GIF box. And we have columns, v if. So this trending GIFs isn't trending GIFs anymore. It's just GIFs. So is one third. And let's see. Okay, so that's good enough for GIF grid. And it uses GIF box. Okay, our application should just work the exact same. We're passing in trending GIFs to GIFs. And this is what's cool is we can maneuver our application around into view components. And view will automatically handle passing that data around. So as soon as our application lands, we are going to go get trending GIFs. That should actually be called fetch trending GIFs. And then it's gonna bind that to trending GIFs. Trending GIFs goes and says, okay, let's look at our templates. We are passing trending GIFs into GIF grid. And then GIF grid is going to take GIFs as an input, as props, and we're gonna pass it into GIF box as the GIF. You can start to see you're building a component tree for your entire application. And everything is reusable since we have a GIF box, a GIF grid, and all of these are compartmentalized in themselves. Let's make sure this works still, dog. 
Those aren't dogs, but dogs? There you go. I like that one. We are definitely going to have a full course on components and choosing what in your application should be a component and how you piece them all together to create giant scalable applications. But for now, this is how we're going to use view components. We're going to register them globally, and then we're just going to use them in our templates. Let's keep moving forward.